Okay, thank you, uh, Claire. Um, so, um, on behalf of also of, of Claire and I, who are the organizers of this uh, seminar, we would like to give you a, a warm welcome and uh, thank you again for being here, uh, very motivated to engage in rich uh, discussions today. Uh, and also, again, a special thanks to the five uh, colleagues who kindly accepted to to present uh, today their works and their knowledge and ideas uh, in this seminar. Um, this international seminar takes place uh, in the context of a research project that was selected uh, last year by the University of Rennes 1 uh, under the 2019 Emerging Scientific Challenges Call. Uh, the title of the seminar and, uh, and, uh, and of the research project is uh, integrating the paradigms of the Anthropocene from international environmental law to earth system law. So I would like to begin by explaining uh, what uh, do we mean by these uh, paradigms uh, of the Anthropocene. Uh, we basically refer to the insights that have emerged or that have been confirmed by progress uh, on earth system science uh, since the launching in 1986 of the International Geosphere Biosphere Program, IGBP, of which uh, Professor Stefan uh, was Executive uh, Director from 1998 to 2004. Uh, there can be many definitions of air system science. I like uh, very much one uh, that given by Rosek, uh, who defines it as the scientific domain that transcends disciplinary boundaries to treat the Earth as an integrated system and seeks a deeper understanding of the physical, chemical, biological, and human interactions that determine the past, current, and future states of the Earth. Progress on Earth system science has evidenced that the Earth behaves as a single complex system. Uh, it presents a series of features uh, commonly attributed to complex systems, such as nonlinear interactions, feedback mechanisms, uh, thresholds, abrupt changes, inherent uncertainty, uh, among others. Furthermore, progress on Earth system science has evidence that uh, we can no longer uh, treat the, the, the Earth as, as a, the Earth system as an ecological system, but that we have to think about it as a social ecological system, uh, since human activities have already altered uh, the, the basic or key biogeochemical processes uh, for the functioning of the Earth system as a whole. Uh, this evidence was at the very uh, origin of the emergence of, of the Anthropocene concept uh, in Earth system science. So our research project is grounded uh, on, on two premises. Uh, the first one is that uh, these uh, paradigms uh, from Earth system science have not been integrated into international environmental law. And the second uh, premise is that uh, such an integration could have uh, potential positive implications for international environmental law. Our preliminary researches tend to show uh, that this integration has not occurred. Uh, for example, the only similar concept to uh, earth, earth system to the Earth system that has been uh, used in international environmental law is the concept of the Earth's ecosystem. Principle 7 of the 1992 Rio Declaration on Environment and Development says that uh, states shall cooperate in a spirit of global partnership to conserve, protect, and restore the health and integrity of the Earth's ecosystem. However, there is no clarity of what the Earth's ecosystem or its health and integrity mean, nor are these concepts uh, defined anywhere. Additionally, the simple reference to the Earth's ecosystem uh, does not necessarily imply the recognition and understanding of the Earth as a complex system. A second example is that international uh, environmental law does not contain any explicit recognition of the Earth uh, system as a complex system, uh, nor of its main features that I have uh, mentioned before. These examples reflect uh, what uh, Louis Cotze and Rack Kim 
have recently called a disconnect between law and air system science. Nevertheless, integrating the paradigms of, uh, uh, from air system science could present a series of positive advantages uh, and implications for international environmental law. For example, it would contribute to enhance the implementation and effectiveness of existing legal principles, such as the principle of cooperation and the precautionary principle. Air system science has enabled to identify critical regions for the functioning of the earth system, such as forest biomes and the major freshwater basins. The recognition of these critical, critical regions can contribute or could contribute to enhance uh, international cooperation uh, for the protection and management of these critical regions. Air system science has also enabled to identify the existence of teleconnections in the air system, that is, the linkages between events that occur at very distant ge geographical locations, uh, one from the other. Recognizing and improving uh, the understanding of these invisible teleconnections could also contribute to enhance international cooperation. Additionally, Recognizing the inherent uncertainty as a feature of the air system, together with the risks associated with, uh, with thresholds and abrupt changes in the air system, could contribute to enhance the implementation and the effectiveness of the precautionary principle. Integrating the new paradigms uh, from air system science could also contribute to enhance the coherence and articulation of a highly fragmented international environmental law. This is because air system science highlights the unity of the air system and the interdependency uh, and interconnectedness of uh, its processes. Finally, integrating the new paradigms from, the, from air system science could also have uh, implications for the interpretation of legal uh, objectives such as, as, as the ultimate objective of the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change in Article 2, uh, specifically the interpretation of uh, uh, concepts such as uh, dangerous anthropogenic interference with the climate system that is at the core of, of this uh, uh, objective. As we can see from the above, it is possible to imagine many different implications of integrating the new paradigms from air system science into international environmental law in terms of legal concepts, of principles, of objectives, of institutions. But this can only be possible if we adopt an interdisciplinary approach. And uh, that's, that was one of the reasons for uh, organizing this seminar uh, today. In this context, uh, the seminar will consist of five presentations uh, each one of those presentations will be followed by a period of uh, 15 to 20 minutes uh, for uh, questions and uh, discussions. And uh, the first presentation by Will Stephan will give us the scientific background of what we can call uh, an, an air system approach. The second presentation by Alexandra Aragao will show us some of the possibilities in which legal scholars have been reflecting, reflecting upon uh, for it in integrating uh, this air system perspective into law. <laughs> the third presentation by Adeli Pomad will take uh, the example of climate and biodiversity to show where, where we are standing right now in terms of advancing towards a more integrated approach. The fourth presentation by Juan Rocha will dig deeper into the future, into the features of uh, co uh, complex systems uh, including the resilience and the possibility of uh, regime shifts. And finally, we will end uh, with the presentation by Alex Volet with a legal perspective on one of the basic features of uh, <coughs> complex systems in, in, in general and of the air system in particular, their intrinsic uncertainty. So I, I wish you a very pleasant um, seminar and I hope uh, you will have fun and, and enjoy. <laughs>